Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today in Dave's garage, we're going to take a look at my desktop workstation, which, as far as I can tell, is about as close as you can get to the ultimate Mac PC hybrid system. Now, when I say hybrid, I mean there's one of each. Well, actually, there's three because there's also a Mac Mini back here. The basic highlights of the system are that it is composed of a PC featuring a 3970X Threadripper, of a Mac Ultra, which is featuring 20 cores of CPU and 64 cores of GPU, along with 64 gigabyte of integrated RAM. And then there's also a Mac Mini, which is just running some automation tasks in the background, but it also contributes. Now, a lot of the storage is down in below the desk. And that might be where you ask, why is the microphone on the other side? Well, it's so I can show you this reverse angle and show you where the workstation actually sits and how the overall layout and setup is. So, first of all, why is there one of each? That's an especially pertinent question because as one of the developers of Windows myself, why would I have a Mac? Well, here's the story. Back when I started doing video for YouTube, I needed to edit my very first video. And I thought, well, that's no problem. I'm just doing this as a hobby. I'll boot up Movie Maker and we'll see how that goes. Well, unfortunately, Movie Maker at that point was no longer included in the product, and nor could I find it available for download anywhere. So I thought, you know what, I've got a MacBook, and it can be dual booted either into Mac or Intel, even though I always ran at Intel, because I just really like the Mac hardware. So I figured I'll just boot it into Mac mode, and I'll use iMovie. Well, I got a couple hours into iMovie, and it's, it's all right, but I thought if I'm going to take the time to learn something, why not learn Final Cut? So I bought Final Cut through the App Store, installed it on my Mac, came to love it. And there's the problem. Being Mac only, you need some substantial Mac hardware to render, especially if you're rendering 4K video, as I tend to do most of my stuff in 4K. But video is just a hobby. I'm actually a software engineer by trade, and so for me, the most important thing is fast compile times and quick turnaround. And so for that, I wanted as many cores as I could get. I chose the 3970X for the PC, even though I could have gone to the 3990, or these days to the 3995, though that wasn't out yet. But I was coming from an i4770K, so... In my case, the 3970 was already a pretty huge jump up, and they're pretty expensive to begin with. And that's another important point. None of this hardware is donated with the exception of, I believe, one network card. Everything else is stuff that I've purchased out of my own pocket to be able to produce this show. Don't do Patreons, I don't do fundraisers or any of that kind of thing, so it all kind of has to work out against the view count and the metrics. So, if you like this channel, be sure to like and subscribe. So let's talk about the general specs of the two machines. The 3970X PC is, of course, an AMD Threadripper machine. It also features 128 gigabytes of RAM, as well as four 2 terabyte SSDs, all at RAID 0, because, hey, I'm just living the life, in RAID 0 to give me 8 terabytes of fast stripe storage. As for graphics, I'm not really a gamer, so I just stuck a 5700 XT in it, which was about all I could get at the time I built this machine. Now, on the Mac side, everything is built towards video editing and rendering the video as fast as I can. So it is the top of the line Mac Ultra with 20 CPU cores. Now, 16 of those cores are performance cores and four of them are economy cores. So it's more like 18 CPUs, I would guess. Although today you can buy that machine maxed out to 128 gigabytes. When I bought it, the maximum you could do was 64 gigabytes, and so that's what it features. Now, the compelling part is not having two machines on your desktop. The compelling part is how do you integrate those two machines into one system so that you can use it almost seamlessly back and forth. That goes for things such as copying and pasting from the Mac to the PC and back and forth. All of these kind of things that make it easier to use. Now, a big part of that picture is the Dell 3818DW monitor, a 38-inch true ultra wide 4k monitor which is nice because you get the extra vertical real estate instead of the ones that are chopped off down at a shorter resolution so this one has an enormous amount of screen real estate which is handy for things like developing and video editing it's not a great gaming monitor because it's limited to 60 hertz but it's plenty for my desktop production workstation i would prefer it were 120 or 144 hertz but it's just not now the really compelling feature of this monitor for me is the built-in kvm that allows me to run the Thunderbolt cable from the Mac to the monitor and get my full 4K display, as well as being able to connect the USB side input into the PC, and I put a dongle in the keyboard. Now, why am I doing that? Well, the keyboard is hardwired into the monitor. Everything that comes out of the monitor then is switched between whichever source you're actively using. So I've put the mouse dongle in the keyboard itself, and then whichever machine activates the keyboard also immediately picks up the mouse. It's not Bluetooth paired because then the machines would fight over it, or you'd have to press a button under the bottom of the mouse, and I'm a busy man. I want it to switch automatically, so by using the proprietary mode of the Logitech mouse, it then does that for me. Now, as you can see, I'm on the Mac desktop, and if I press a single button on the monitor, 
Within about three seconds, it happily switches over to the PC side. Now I'm working on the PC and the mouse is automatically active as is the keyboard. One step further is that coming out of the monitor to USB chain is a large 10 or 12 port USB hub and now all the peripherals like webcams and microphones and everything else plug into that. So they all switch automatically every time you switch the input. You want to have a good USB driver stack, which there's nothing you can do about that if you don't, I guess, but it does stress it a little bit. I'm using a Corsair gaming keyboard because I like the mechanical feel of it, I like the sound, and I like the RGB colors. And that's a good time to talk about RGB. This PC features pretty much peak RGB. By that, I mean it's got a custom controller running the Night Driver software that I developed, and it allows you to treat the fans as a general canvas, and you can paint left to right, up and down, radially, whichever way you want, and it allows for some rather interesting effects coming out of the system fans. The fans are all wired as one long sequential chain, and the software knows how many LEDs are in a fan, so it can individually address each fan or even a part of a fan. Now, some of the effects, like this old IBM tape reel effect, are a little distracting if you're not used to it. I'm used to a lot of blinking LEDs. But if you're not, a simple $3, well, probably $2, remote control can be used to talk to the little module's IR transmitter, and you can change colors, and you can change the effects and everything else, or settle it down whenever you need to. And speaking of dust blinking lights, it's also the case that there's a PDP-11 up here, so if the power of the 3970 and the Mac Ultra are not enough, you can go to the PDP-11. Now, as nice as it is to have automatic switching USB keyboard and mouse and have that all automatically cascade off of the monitor, what about audio? What I wound up doing for audio was to grab an Apollo Twin X connected by Thunderbolt to the Mac and then by Optical Digital to the PC. In this way, both the PC and the Mac can simultaneously drive audio and they're mixed by the Apollo on the Mac. So as long as the Mac is running, both machines have sound. If the Mac's not running, neither machine has sound. But the Mac is always running. Thanks to the way Spotify works, I can actually go and control it from either machine because I can select the playback on the Mac Studio, which will then play out through the shop speakers. So even if the audio is coming from the PC, it comes out the digital optical audio out, goes into the Apollo Twin, and comes out the shop speakers. And because this is a garage with all kinds of reverb and weird corners and everything else, I've got an equalizer in here where I can run the big standard happy face curve and make the audio drop out in the middle of the frequency range a little bit to smooth things out. There's also a 2x8 multiplexer, which allows me to drive four shop speakers and have individual control over the levels of each one so I can fine-tune and balance it. Capping off the monitor are two important peripherals. One is the Instalink 360 camera, which tracks me wherever I go when it's turned on, if I, if I wish that to happen. And the other is a BenQ light bar, which cascades light down directly in front of, but not onto the monitor. It provides nice ambient lighting indirect, and you can adjust the color temperature and the brightness automatically, or there's an auto button. Either way, it was one of those things that I just kind of tried on a lark and didn't realize how cool they were and how much I wanted one until I actually had it. And at this point, I like it so much that I find the desktop setup kind of boring and unattractive without it. Now, what makes the system more compelling, of course, is integration between the two and how they're connected. These machines are connected via several ways. The first is that coming out to the shop, I have a 10 gigabit CAT 6A line coming out. Even though it's got a break of CAT 5E underneath the driveway, it still seems to work, so cross your fingers. But... That brings my one gigabit internet in. And from there, there's a 10 gigabit switch in the desk, which routes 10 gigabit internet to the home machines, to the Mac, to the PC, and to the Storinator. Oh, did I not mention the Storinator? Well, it's off in the closet, and it's actually connected by 25 gigabit fiber optic OM3 cable. The Storinator and the PC both feature surplus cheap eBay versions of the Mellanox Connect X4 cards that I was able to grab at, a, like I said, a pretty good price. What's not cheap, however, but is also very nice, is 25 gigabits for the Mac. And for that, I'm using an Addo Thunderlink 3. That is an external box which connects via two Thunderbolt cables and then provides two 25 gigabit ports for your Mac. Now, if I run iPerf 3 from the PC to the Storinator, I get very close to the 25 gigabit maximum threshold. But if I do it on the Mac, I'm only getting 22. Well, thanks to a friend named Kai on the Hardware Junkies forum on Facebook, he pointed out that the maximum throughput of Thunderbolt is pretty much 22 gigabits. Now, this card can do both at the same time, and so you could bond those two pairs together, but in my case, I'm using it to make a bridge between the 10 gigabit and the 25 gigabit networking so that everybody can connect to each other without a dedicated 25 gigabit switch because those are not yet quite cheap enough. The one I'm looking at, actually, I've already ordered it, but it hasn't arrived yet, is the QNAP model. 
So when that arrives, all these machines will only need one 25 gigabit port instead of two to cascade it on with manual routing and all kinds of other shenanigans that I've accomplished. It'll be much, much simpler in just a few days. The Mac, the PC, and the Mac Mini are also networked by TCP IP over Thunderbolt. How is an AMD 3970X connected by Thunderbolt? The motherboard that I used in the PC build, which is, I believe, a Gigabyte Aorus Master, is also set up with a Thunderbolt header. And although technically at that time it did not support Thunderbolt, I found out that by putting a Titan Ridge card in and just hooking everything up and running the drivers from the machine that did support it, everything worked fine. Now, it's not a super speedy connection. I can barely get 10 gigabits across from the PC to the Mac, but the Mac to Mac performance is a little better yet. And that's why I went to 25 gigabit. What do I need 25 gigabit for? Well, it's not so much necessary for the video editing part, although it's nice to have SSD level speeds across the network to the NAS. It's really more for moving those files around because they can get quite enormous, as in several terabytes each. Let's take a quick look at the specs of the two machines in comparison. The 3970X features 32 cores or 64 threads. The Mac Ultra features 20 cores, 16 of which are performance and 4 of which are actually economy threads. In terms of memory, the PC rocks 128 gigabytes and the Mac Ultra has what was then the highest amount you could buy, 64 gigabytes. The PC features four 2 terabyte cards in RAID for a total of 8 terabytes and it reads and writes from all four drives at the same time. That gives me a performance somewhere around 10,000 megabytes per second, which would be 80 gigabits per second, which would be again too much to stuff even down the 25 gigabit network, but it's plenty. The Mac Ultra has an external RAID cage, which is connected by Thunderbolt again. And by the way, if you're wondering how I haven't run out of Thunderbolt ports yet, well, I long since did, even with four on the back, I try to keep the two in the front free. Of the four ports on the back of the Mac, two of them go to the Addo Thunderlink 3, and two go to OWC Thunderbolt switches, which then provide three ports each on the front for a total of six ports on the OWC switches, two ports on the back, and two on the front, so I have 10 Thunderbolt active connections available. There's also a Thunderbolt with video running from the Mac Ultra to the external teleprompter monitor that I use when I'm doing a scripted episode. So I'm making pretty extensive use of Thunderbolt. The Mac Ultra also has a Thunderbolt RAID cage that has two Samsung PCI-based 6TB devices. Inside the RAID cage are two Samsung 6.4TB cards, each SSDs and each in their own PCI slot, and they're rated together to form a 12.8TB volume. It's not incredibly quick, limited to about 20 gigabytes per second because of the Thunderbolt bus, but it was a good, at that point, cost-effective way to get large SSD-based storage. But what fun would any of this be without actual benchmarks? And so, of course, I ran Geekbench 5, and I did the compute and the CPU test, and what do we get? We got the 3970X pulled 29,034 in the multi-threaded versus 1370 in the single-threaded and 77,000 in the compute test. Now the Mac Ultra was a little bit behind that in CPU at 23,416, and the single core was quite a bit higher at 1,728. The compute score was higher yet at 107,687. Now the fact that the GPU testing just puts it, say, 30 or 40 percent ahead of the other machine, that's not telling the whole story because the M1 features encoders for video that I'm not sure that the AMD has or doesn't have quite as refined ones, and so when you're transcoding video, the Mac does a pretty snappy job. Now both machines, as they run at the 25 gigabit networking speed, have full access to the Storinator closet machine, and here's a look at that machine. If you're wondering, where is this? In the compressor room? That's exactly where it is. I've not decided if the acoustic load from the compressor could actually be bad for the machine. I know they're well isolated enough and through concrete and a wall and everything else that there's not a lot of vibration that makes it through, but there is a lot of sound, so I have not been running the compressor while the Storinator is active. I'm still not sure that I need to worry, but it gives me the willies. And speaking of the willies, if you've got a few minutes, check out my book on Amazon, Secrets of the Autistic Millionaire. The awesome clickbait title might imply it's about financial success, but it's really about living your best life if you're on the spectrum. And it's not just for people that are on the spectrum. The book is intended for anybody who lives with, loves, works with, or is friends with somebody who's on the spectrum or that suspects they may be on the spectrum themselves. If you fall into those categories, check out the free sample on Amazon. Link in the video description. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Jay's Garage.